Hi, story time lovers. What comes to your mind when you think about pigeons? Most people tend to think of pigeons as pest birds, especially in cities. In the best of cases, they might enjoy feeding them breadcrumbs at the park. But did you know that pigeons are highly intelligent? Pigeons are considered to be one of the most intelligent birds on the planet. For instance, they can recognize all 26 letters of the alphabet, as well as being able to conceptualize. Let me tell you three more amazing facts about them to help you change your mind. Fact number two. Pigeons, like humans, can see in color. But unlike humans, they can also see ultraviolet light, a part of the spectrum that humans cannot see. As a result, pigeons are often used in search and rescue missions at sea because of this unique sense combined with excellent all-round vision. Fact number three. Pigeons have been found to pass the mirror test. That is to say, the ability to recognize their own reflection in a mirror. The pigeon is one of only six species and the only non-mammal to have this ability. Last but not least, fact number four. Did you know that medals have been awarded to pigeons for their services in saving human lives? Take Commando. Commando was a pigeon used in the British Armed Forces during World War II to carry crucial intelligence. He carried out more than 90 missions during the war and received the Dickin Medal, the equivalent of the Victoria Cross, for the dangerous missions he accomplished. So now you may understand why in today's story, Dr. Koo and his pigeon friends decide they are tired of being treated by people like parasites and decide to hatch a plan to earn people's admiration once again. Dr. Koo and the Pigeon Protest was written by Sarah Hampson, a Canadian award-winning journalist. And although she has had a long and successful career at the Globe and Mail, this is her first picture book. Have you noticed the beautiful soft lines and muted watercolors on the cover of Dr. Koo and the Pigeon Protest? Well, they were drawn by Cass Reich, a Canadian artist and educator who has traveled around the world from London to Beijing, Hong Kong and Melbourne. She also provided some beautiful illustrations for Carlton Crosses Canada, a sweet and fun adventure of 70-year-old Annie Magruder and her dog who set out on a road trip across Canada to visit her sister. And she illustrated what grew in Larry's garden, which I read to you recently. In fact, both What Grew in Larry's Garden and Dr. Koo and the Pigeon Protest were published by Kids Can Press, a Canadian-owned publisher of children's books, which includes characters such as Franklin the Turtle, which has sold over 65 million books in 30 languages around the world. And now, let's find out how Dr. Koo and his friends set about rehabilitating their reputation in the city. Dr. Archibald Koo was a big city kind of pigeon. He was sophisticated. He knew how to get around. He knew how to land in just the right places. He had favorite perches in the city. The edges of beautiful buildings. He was friends with gargoyles. Statues. Heads were better than shoulders. Park benches that offered a view. It's true that Dr. Koo would often look down in his beak in a way that made him seem very serious. But he wasn't always. It's just that deep in his feathers, he was a curious sort. He observed the way of the world as he flew about it. Dr. Koo knew things. And he knew he had a problem. Or rather, he could see that there was a problem with pigeons. One day, Dr. Koo was perched with his pigeon pals on a wire. There was Hootyclaw. He was a young pigeon with recently acquired flying feathers. Alongside Hootie perched Vern Birdman, a shy fellow in a light brown suit. In the pecking order, he was happy to be last. And then in flew Dove Blanchett. She prided herself on her shiny coat, which she kept spotlessly clean. I'm part turtle dove, she liked to tweet with her beak in the air. 
The conversation started out as it normally did. They cackled about the supply of corn kernels in the park. They nattered about the nearing of winter. They prattled about new perches. But then Hootyclaw dared to bring up something they all had been thinking for a very long time. We pigeons get no respect, he blurted. Those humans down there, Hooty pecked at the air to indicate the people below on the streets, they hate us, they shoo us away. There, there, cooed Vern, hopping a little closer to Hooty and nudging him with his wing. Calm down. Calm down, hooted Hooty. No one appreciates us. I'm the voice of the next generation pigeon, and I'm not standing for it. Oh yes, he was in a flap. I know what Hooty means, offered Dove softly. When people see a bluebird, they sigh and get dreamy-eyed. They call them little fellows. If they hear a cardinal sing, well, that's even worse. You'd think they'd never heard a bird before. And it's the same with robins. They can't wait for them to arrive. But we're just as beautiful. She shook raindrops from her glossy coat and held her little head up high. Vern twitched a bit, uncertain if he should say anything. But then he thought about the time a car almost ran him down, on purpose. He recalled the lady who swung her umbrella at him for no reason. Some people say we're rats with wings, he observed with a gentle sigh. At this point, Hooty, Dove and Vern looked down the line to Dr. Koo. It's the way of the modern world, cooed Dr. Koo. It used to be different. As the pigeons leaned in, blinking with curiosity, Dr. Koo told them of the dreams he often had while he nestled with the gargoyles high up in the sky. Pigeons were once like angels, he said wistfully, summoning his visions of another time. They accompanied the gods of ancient worlds. They delivered news of the Olympic Games in ancient Greece. They were revered as signs of peace and love and wisdom and beauty. I have seen pigeons in important wars, Dr. Koo continued dreamily, fearlessly flying into danger with notes strapped to their backs. They delivered messages to soldiers in battle. They carried medicine across battlefields strewn with injured men. They were heroes. I knew it, cried Hooty, hopping up and down on the wire. I knew we were special. Timidly, Vern piped up again. What should we do, Dr. Koo? We need a plan, cried Hooty. We need to be loved again, Dove sang. Dr. Koo turned his head one way and then the other. He hummed, he hooted, he pecked, and he pondered. Then he cuckooed his plan into the ears of his companions, and off they flew to spread the word to the other pigeons in the city. The next morning, all the pigeons had disappeared. The squares were empty, so were park benches. On the edges of buildings, the gargoyles were lonely. It was eerie. The people in the city were the ones who were nattering now. What does this mean? They whispered worriedly to one another. Those who came to the parks with breadcrumbs and corn kernels were sad. They spread out their offerings on the pavement. They reached out their arms in friendship, but still no pigeons came. Nothing felt the same. The pigeons had been part of the life of the big busy city, part of what filled the sky with mystery, with beauty, part of what made the parks come alive. Soon people asked the mayor what to do, but she had no clue. That was when Dr. Archibald Koo flew into the ledge outside the mayor's office. He clutched a small book about the history of the pigeon, and on his little leg was strapped a letter. Dear Mrs. Mayor, 
We pigeons have flown the coop because we feel unwelcome in our own home. A city is a place for all kinds. We love it here. Pigeons and people must learn to get along. We will refrain from splatting on cars and heads. Let's create composting areas and parks for our droppings. This will keep statues and public spaces clean and create rich fertilizer for our city's green spaces. In return, we ask that you remove the spikes that keep us off ledges. Don't shoo us away. Be neighborly. Stop and say hello. And please, no more running us down with your cars. Let's remember the history of cooperation between people and pigeons and enjoy living together in our beautiful city. Yours, in feathers and stripes, Dr. Archibald Koo. The mare was moved to a tear or two. She shook Dr. Koo's claw. That summer, the city held the first annual pigeon parade to celebrate diversity and friendship. At an appointed time, a flock of pigeons filled the sky like sudden laughter in a room. When the pigeons were over the crowds, they released something surprising. Not the usual droppings people had come to expect, but little notes untied from the straps on their legs. The notes gently fluttered down, landing on people's heads, on their shoulders, on their cars, and everyone eagerly caught them. When you are loved, you can love in return. The end. So, next time you walk down the street or play at the park, I hope you will remember this story and see pigeons differently. In fact, to make sure you remember this story, let's play the Dr. Koo quiz. Are you ready? Question number one. What season does the story take place? Autumn. And do you remember what season it is when the story ends? Summer. Question number two. Which three birds mentioned by Dove are more liked by people? Bluebirds, cardinals and robins. Question number three. Quote, two periods in history when pigeons were revered. First, in ancient Greece, delivering news of the Olympic Games and during wars, delivering messages and medicine. And one last question. Question number four. What is the message on the notes dropped by the pigeons during the parade? When you are loved, you can love in return. So, how well did you do? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to get your own copy of Dr. Koo and the Pigeon Protest by clicking on the link in the description box below. Take care, read on, and see you soon.